Greetings. How is everyone today? Hope doing great. And uh, have a wonderful day. And, you know, uh, if you have a wonderful day, praise the Lord. If you had a rough day, we, we need to learn how to praise the Lord. And I know that for some people that uh, they've had some hard times. And uh, I think that's why the direction that we're going to go in is tonight about think not. Because we're in a battle. And we'll be in a battle uh, to the end of time. And uh, I want you, if you got your Bible, to go to Luke chapter 18. Uh, I've put some bookmarkers in mine because I've got several scriptures I want us to look at. And in verse 18, or chapter 18 of Luke, verse 1, and he's talking to Jesus, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and, faint, and not to faint. In other words, you know, uh, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 tells us to pray without ceasing. Uh, we always, we should be praying constantly or uh, really communicating with God uh, through the Holy Spirit uh, all the time. And the thing about where he says, and not to faint, is not to lose heart. And, uh, you know, if you're, not, if you're not going through anything, if everything's going fine, uh, and you see somebody else that's struggling, and I know that sometimes, and I've been there myself, been hard on people by saying, well, you know, uh, it'll be all right, just get over it and move on, etc., etc. And that sometimes it's easier said than done. And so that's why we need to take in consideration uh, and be... Uh, more uh, sensitive and be more um, willing to have compassion for people that are going through uh, difficult times, difficult seasons in their life so that uh, we, if anything, that we can comfort them and do in such a way that it helps strengthen them instead of tearing them down. Um, you know, uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, let's look at verse 3. It says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. In other words, Jesus, he endured a lot of opposition and we have to be understand that we're going to face difficulties in life there's going to be times just as God uses people to help people Satan uses people to hurt people and uh, you can be a child of God and still mess up with that said, I want you to look in um, Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, uh, let's look at verse 16, Matthew 16, 16. Well, let's get 15. And uh, he saith unto them, But whom say you that I am? In other words, Jesus is asking the disciples, Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, or son of Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And then, look, jump down, to verse 
21 and 20 through 23. And from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must suffer or must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Then Peter set, took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he, Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but that those that be of men. And uh, the thing about it is that we are not exempt from being tested, and even used by the devil. Just as Peter was, he, he was right there with Jesus. He, was, he had just got through verifying that his faith was that Jesus was the son of the living God and turns right around and goes contrary to the scripture the word that Jesus was teaching them, and said, "No, that's not going. It, that's not going to happen. They're not going to kill you, Lord Jesus, because he didn't understand. Yet, because of his lack of understanding, it was Satan that was messing with his faith. Um, the anointing doesn't scare the devil." And you want to know why? Look in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Very first verse. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when he, they were ended, he afterward hungered. And then what happens? You read verse 3, all the way through uh, verse 13, and you'll find that Satan was quoting scripture to Jesus, who was full of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was anointed and was full of the Holy Spirit. And Satan didn't run from him. Satan knew who it was. But he was trying to cause Jesus to mess up. Because uh, if Satan could have gotten Jesus to have um, doubted, to have weakened his stance, to avoid going t through the crucifixion, uh, it would have undermined everything. And that's why Satan tried it. And you know, uh, it's not the first time. You go back in Zechariah chapter 3. You'll see that Satan was making uh, accusations against Joshua. And uh, yet, yet God, because Joshua was his servant, he was a man of God. Uh, God had a, a white robe put on him, a, a mitre put on his head, basically like a crown. Even though Satan was there trying to condemn him because he wasn't perfect. You go into Job chapter 1, 
What is Satan doing? God said, what are you doing, Satan? He says, I'm going through out the earth trying to find somebody that I can destroy. And God says, have you considered my servant Job? Well, you've got a hedge around about him. You're protecting him. And God said, well, I'll let you, I'll let you go try him, but you can't kill him. And not once but twice Satan went before God and to, to request or get permission to attack Job. And with that said, we have to learn that attacks, if we're going to serve God, we're going to be tested. We're going to have the enemy, Satan, and his demons try to make us mess up, try to cause us to fall flat on our face, try to cause us to become uh, discouraged, try to come, become uh, faint-hearted, and just give up. And a lot of times he has succeeded with people. And yet, as it says in, uh, let's read here in 1 John chapter 5. In 1 John chapter 5 verse 18, it says, We know that whosoever is born God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. That wicked one, he keepeth, is begotten of God, keepeth himself. In other words, what John was writing is saying that when you understand who you are in the body of Christ, You'll learn to put on the full armor of God so that as Paul said that you'll be able to stand, stand, and therefore stand some more. That you've got the armor on from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. And you're ready to go whatever the enemy dishes at you. You're going to just put it to a stop. And that's why, and the wicked one toucheth him not. You remember what uh, uh, James said? Submit to God and resist the devil and he'll, what, flee from you? Well, you, the first thing is knowing who you are in God. And being a child of God, being led by the Spirit, then you will be able to Stand. You'll humble yourself to the Lord. And when you do that, you see, I think that's one of the problems today in a lot of these ministries. They teach, they go way overboard. It's, and we need faith. So don't get me wrong. I believe in, in standing in faith, walking in faith. Speaking in faith, and yet there is some that teach it in the wrong manner. Because if it was the way they said it, then there wouldn't be a hospital needed. There wouldn't be doctors needed because nobody'd be sick. Everybody'd be healed. All they have to do is have faith in God. And, and I know too many people that are God-fearing, love the Lord, believe the Word of God, and I have watched them go through sickness. I have watched some of them uh, give up their last breath here and enter into the presence of God. And uh, it, it was like early on in our ministry is that uh, um, I had uh, well he's actually a doctor in uh, theology 
And uh, he told me, he said, you should never pray for anything but one time. Anything other than one time, then you don't have no faith. And I'm thinking, that's not right. I mean, Jesus, he was full of the Holy Spirit. He was God in flesh. And they was things that he couldn't do because of people's unbelief. Yeah. And I mean, it's like uh, the one man that told Jesus that Jesus said, if you'll only believe, he said, I believe, help my unbelief. And, and that's where praying comes in. Praying so that we faint not. We don't get weak hearted. We don't uh, get discouraged. And, uh, you know, um, it's like anything. Um, when you have people, you're going to have problems. Because ne you're not going to find everybody going to agree. And it's like in church. The bigger the church is, sooner or later, sooner or later, the bigger the problem they're going to have. And it may take years, or it may be that they rotate the pastor out, or the congregation. I know that uh, having been to a pastor's teacher's conference, um, Rod Parsley's up at uh, World Harvest, Columbus, Ohio. And one of the things that I learned while I was up there was that his church, every five years, had, was a whole complete new group of people, except for a select handful that was in his staff. Now that shocked me. But then I've learned that there's a lot to that. And, uh, uh, you know, people can go so far, but then there's a point that is it God, or is it people, or is it the devil? And that's why when you find yourself in a battle, you need to check. Am I in the will of God? Am I hearing the right spirit? See, like we read back there in uh, uh, Matthew 16, Peter was in the right spirit at one point, but then he got in the wrong spirit just a short time later. And... Uh, and we have to do, we have to, we have to search our hearts. As John said, test the spirits. In other words, make certain that you're, make certain that you you know that you're following the right spirit. And just like being in a battle, as the days towards the end of time increases, so will be the battle upon the saints. Now, let me give you a verse of scripture. You can read it. It's in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And, and if you put it in the text that it's used in, it would be in the last three and a half years of tribulation. Well, if, if it's going to happen then, do you think that we're not subject to being 
uh, attacked spiritually. Here's what it says in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And to think to change times and laws. And they shall be given in to his right hand until a time and times and the dividing times. In other words, three and a half years. And uh, and so, you know, wear out the saints of the Most High God. Wear out. How? Spiritually? Yep. Physically? Yep. Emotionally? Yep. You name it, the enemy knows how to attack us. When you read Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, in which I read, you know, verse 1 of Luke chapter 4, where Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and after he came out of the wilderness or was coming out after 40 days of being tested by the devil then the devil tries him three more times and Jesus was at his weakest because he hadn't had any food to eat for 40 days and 40 nights or 40 days and so you can be Full of the Spirit of God. And don't think for a moment that Satan won't try to mess you up. He will try to trip you up. He will try to pull you down. He's had thousands of years of practice. And he knows his time's getting shorter by the moment. And that's why as we get closer to the coming of the Lord for his church, his people, Satan is going to have all-out warfare. And especially during the tribulation period. And that's why um, we need, as Jesus said, that men always ought to pray and not to faint. You know, one of the easiest things is when everything is going good that you quit praying. And that's when you're getting yourself set up for fall. Whether it be with you personally, with your family, or with your church family. And that's why we always ought to stay prayed up so that we can stay up and that we can not be discouraged nor be dismayed. And that's why getting that word of God in, reading that word, hearing that word, being in the house of the Lord, associating with other brothers and sisters in the Lord, helps us to not faint. Um, that's why I said, you know, being anointed does not exempt you from the devil. I know that the Bible tells us, New Testament, that the, even the demons tremble at the, at the name of Jesus. You know, you can read in the Gospels where they begged Jesus not to destroy them. And he sent them into the herd of pigs, and the pigs ran over the cliff and drowned it in the ocean or sea. And, uh, you know, yet Satan will try to get you to stop. 
uh, I've seen this in church. Uh, come in, good word from the Lord, excited, and before you get five miles down the road, it's like everything just went chaotic. Why? Because Satan wants, he's a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's a liar. He's a manipulator. He is a deceiver. He is an oppressor. And an oppressor is one that causes people to be depressed. And so when Jesus said what he did in Luke chapter 18 verse 1 was because he knew that just as he was telling the disciples who would become the future apostles, who would become part of the ones that wrote the Gospels of the New Testament so that we have the Word of God to live by, warn them to pray so you don't faint. And, uh, uh, you know, that's why just like Judas, he could be, he was Jesus' uh, treasure and then the next moment betrayed him. You know, uh, with a kiss. And that's and we have to be on guard for that. Um, Satan sits in a lot of churches. The devil does. And uh, he can split a church in a heartbeat. Because if he, you know, as a old saying, if you give him, if you give the devil a, an inch, she'll become your ruler. And there's a lot of truth to that. And I've watched churches, been through it our own self, be doing good, and the next thing you know, the devil gets involved, and you have a church split. When we first started at our home church, first turned to the Lord, they was going through a church split. We didn't understand what it was, and it took a long time to understand what it was. And finally, once I found out what it was, uh, my mentor, Jim Kogi, a great man of God, uh, as we was talking, and uh, he helped me to understand. And I thought, afterwards, I thought, why? We're supposed to be working together. It's not my way or hit the highway. It's God's way. And let's look through the scripture and see how God wants it done. And yet, it doesn't happen like that. And that's why we're in a battle. So don't think that if something goes chaotic in your life, that it's just happening to you. It's happening to every born-again believer that takes a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the more that you stand for Him, the more you set yourself up to become a target for Him to try and to tear you down. Uh, I have you know, I've watched people, uh, they would go, and it's like they would go through a cycle. And they'd be doing good, and all of a sudden, mess up. Get back right with the Lord, and then mess up. And, uh, uh, and I remember that at our home church, and um, pray for uh, this person, and... Uh, the world of them 
And of course, you take this was we were just baby Christians at the time, so we were in the learning stage too. And they get up one Sunday and say, make a bold statement. Remind me of Peter making a bold statement. And then before the week is out, they was wishing they hadn't said them words because they was eating crow, so to speak. Uh, they had messed up. They had fell back. And then they go through the process again. And see, that's the thing about God. God don't never quit on us. We may quit on ourselves, but God don't want to quit on us. Uh, he holds us by the right hand of righteousness, says says in the book of Isaiah. And if we will not faint, he will take us through every ordeal that we go through. And I know that there is times that we all will be kicking and screaming because we got to go through this. We stay true to God, God will stay true to us. And He will help us. He helped Job, He helped Joshua. And yes, he helped Peter, even because Peter messed up time and time again. Jesus didn't quit on him, and he's not going to quit on you. So, get battle ready, because if you've never been in a battle, then be prepared. And 95% of what, having victory is preparation, being ready for the battle. And that's why Jesus warns us. He warned us all through the scripture is to be ready. Be ready in season, out of season. Men always ought to pray and not to faint. And with those warnings, if we'll take heed, our trials, our testings, will be short-lived and we'll come out a whole lot better and a whole lot stronger and a whole lot quicker than if we're not ready. Because if you're not ready, you'll probably make a bigger mess than you could ever imagine. <laughs> so, so I'm going to stop here tonight. I just felt that, you know, none of us is perfect. And if we realize that every one of us, the stronger and bolder stand that we take for the Lord Jesus Christ, the harder he's going to come at us. And uh, that's why we have to be ready. So, you know. I've been spiritually attacked before, yes, absolutely. Does it end? Well, just as it says in uh, Luke chapter 4, that Satan departed for a season. Because God's not going to let him do but so much. And he'll say, that's enough. You leave my servant alone. You leave my child alone. And... That's why, as John said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Be good cheer, we've overcome the world, uh, 1 John chapter 4. So, faint not, pray, pray, pray. Always be in prayer. You can work and be in prayer. You can be doing things and be in prayer. Pray without ceasing so that you don't faint, so that you don't lose heart. Well, I thank you for taking time to listen. I hope that this has helped a lot of you that's listening to this 
teaching, read the scriptures. I invite you to come and be part of and join us at Mountain Harvest Church out here uh, on Waterfield Road and right at the intersection of Greenville and Waterfield, one mile off of uh, Highway 58 at the Caution Light at West Galax. And I'd uh, love to have you come be join us Sunday mornings at uh, 1110. Uh, that's usually about the time we get started. And uh, if you don't have a home church, uh, we'll invite you to come be part of our church body. God's got a place for everybody, and everybody needs to be where God wants them. And make yourself useful for the glory of God. As always, I close out with the greatest question that could ever be asked. Have you been born again? Have you ever repented of your sins? Repent means to turn from the way that you had been going and turn towards the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, if you haven't, let today be that day that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you become a child of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, and that you know that you know that you're heaven bound. No questions about it, no ifs, ands, or buts, because you know. And you'll know if you're born again because God will change the inside. He will change your heart. That's why you got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. So let's just pray this prayer together. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive me of all my sins, my faults, my failures. Forgive me for not seeking you earlier in life. Lord, I want to live for you from this day forward. And Lord, I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can give you honor and glory in every day that I live here on earth. Because it's through the Holy Spirit that I can transform to be who you want me to be. So I thank you, Lord. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you prayed that and you meant it, God will clean you up, fill you, and use you for his honor and glory. And you still got to be ready for battles because they will come. So as Pastor Randy and wife Judy and all of us at Mountain Harvest Church, again, we invite you to come join us out here Sunday morning. And we hope and pray that in between now and then, if the Lord tarries, may God use you in a great and mighty way. Be a witness to the lost. And may God bless you through Jesus Christ. Have a great week in Jesus. Amen.